The tribunal, still highlighting issues, trying to find answers, but unfortunately, the finishing line appears nowhere in sight. As per usual, the phone calls came thick and heavy, and this was the issue which seemed to occupy most of you. Marion Butler from Harmonstown in Dublin said, not being allowed on the pitch was a disgrace, and it took away from the atmosphere. Mal Brennan said the fans were not treated well in Crow Park. It was sad the supporters could not come on the pitch. The GA supporters are well-mannered, and there was no need for the number of guards. Well, first of all, let's give you the GA point of view. The reason why fans were not allowed onto the pitch at the end of the game yesterday was all in the interest of safety. The Public Safety's Authority have decreed that it is dangerous for fans to assemble on the field after the game, and the GA are obliged to carry out its obligations in this respect. Yet Fergal Inchascaris was quick to point out the inconsistencies in the application of this particular decree. He wondered, how can people run onto the pitch in Clonus before the game was over and invade the pitch at the final whistle, whilst in Crow Park people were not let near the pitch at all? Well spotted, Fergal. It would appear to me that the only place that this particular decree is being implemented is Crow Park. Just witness these joyous scenes at Parky Keeve. Again, in Turles at the end of the Munster hurling final. And culminating in Clonus yesterday. While I do believe it is very important that the GA take vital steps to safeguard the safety of spectators, I do not think having a large crowd of spectators gathered in over two acres of open space really constitutes a major hazard. Such joyous celebrations are in a way unique to the GA and should be maintained. Yesterday's aftermath celebrations in Crow Park had all the appearances of someone having organised a huge party and no one bothered to turn up. It was a bit of an anti-climax. But have we an alternative? Yes, we do. Richard from Meath suggests that if they are not going to let anyone on the pitch, why don't the GA bring a mobile stand onto the pitch and present the cup there? Good idea, Richard. It's done for the Champions League. It ensures that all the spectators can at least see the presentation ceremony. Yesterday, the meat supporters in parts of the Hogan stand wouldn't have had a clue what was happening at the presentation. And maybe, just maybe, it might bring an end to those long, audible presentation speeches. Or is that just wishful thinking on my part? Up in the north, it was this issue which seemed to occupy many people's minds. Paul from Tipperary wondered, how come a player could become involved with the opposing manager without being sent off? In this instance, given the strict refereeing directives that are supposed to be in operation nowadays, Ross Carr can consider himself very, very lucky not to have received a red card. Although, it must be said, given the ease with which Brian McElinden went down, a career as a boxer would certainly be out of the question for the arm -ar man. Yet, on the same issue, Jerry McDermott from Selbridge quotes Rule 5 from the rule book. He maintains there is no rule in the book covering an incident between a player and an opposing manager. Rule 5 manager is not mentioned. Now, that sets the cat among the pigeons. But can we do something about curbing the present trend among all GA managers of constantly moving up and down the sidelines, with many an illegal encroachment onto the field as well? At times, such activities are an incitement, both to the rival team and their supporters, and adds nothing to the game as a spectacle. But what can be done about it? Gary Fox agrees with Colm O'Rourke's suggestion made yesterday that the managers should have a box in the stand. In my opinion, here's two more ideas that would be worth a try. One, if the manager wants to send instructions to his team, why not utilise a runner, as in the International Rules Series, who is entitled to go onto the field to bring instructions to his teammates. Or secondly, failing that, why not borrow another idea from soccer of having an enforcement zone outside his team dugout from which he is not allowed to move. Our esteemed president Mary McAleese continues to display her lifelong interest in the GA by turning up in Clonus to support her native down yesterday. But judging by this public address announcement before the game, it would appear that somebody up there hasn't realised that Mary Robinson has moved on. Enjoy the rest of the bank holiday weekend. It is our proud privilege on behalf of the Ulster GA Council and all our patrons in Clonus to welcome here to Clonus today Uachtaran Naherd Ahaitcha Myra Van Vigrobeen.